produce regular product giveaways happening here on the Jeep Talk Show every month and sometimes every week. The world's most downloaded Jeep podcast will be giving you, the listener, a chance to win serious gear from major companies that you know, love, and trust. You want a chance to win tires, suspension components, maybe more? Listen every week for your chance to win big. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in. Yourself. God damn it, we have a good sounding show. It's just it's just amazing to me from where it started to where it is now. All right, guys, so we have an announcement to make. Talking about where it is now, we are going to have a fourth weekly episode. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the internet, <laughs> this happens. Dun, 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 dun. So our fourth weekly episode will be an interview. We will uh, be releasing the interview episode, you call it whatever you guys want to call it, this is what I'm calling it, on Thursdays. Monday, the format you've loved for years, Wednesday is the roundtable, Thursday, the interview, and Friday, the same format as Monday's episode, Jeep Talk Show, four days a week. Woo-woo. I've said it before, I'll say it again, damn, I'm already tired. Boys day. <laughs> oh, we no can finally place. reuse that. <laughs> <laughs> interview thursday yep yep so that just means that uh, on our monday episode we won't have the interview there and you know i was thinking for the interviewee the guest it's going to be a lot better because uh whenever they're telling uh their followers on social media they'll usually say go to the 31 minute mark or 46 minutes or wherever it was wherever the interview is right. now they'll just say listen to episode five blah 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 six whatever thousand seven hundred whatever whatever it's going to be it's just so much more organized <laughs> it's all smoke it's, and mirrors. <laughs> almost like we know what we're doing, right? <laughs> almost. <So professional. laughs> you know, Jeepers, if you haven't been keeping count, let me tell you about our sponsors that are all behind these giveaways. Midland Radio USA. And giveaways, plural, by the way. We're doing this on a regular basis. There is Midland Radio USA. We've got, we've already given away a radio. Next entire USA. We're giving away a set of tires. JKS Manufacturing. You know about them. Bolt. The guys who, uh, you know, hook up your uh, your Jeep key to everything else that's locked up on your Jeep. So Dirty nice. Acres, the Gear Spot, Rock Auto, Northridge 4x4. They've really been taking care of the Jeep Talk Show listeners. Stein Yeager, there's a whole bunch more to come. These are the great businesses that have been agreeing to give you their great products. Not just once, but several times over the next 12 months. You got to tell them thank you like from the bottom of your heart and you can thank the jeep talk show directly by well helping us out by telling somebody about the show and our great giveaways remember the hashtag jeep talk show and hashtag giveaways on all your social media posts as well to help spread the word all of them damn it the jts team is here to inform and entertain you about jeeps if you're new to the jeep world or thinking about jumping in and getting your feet dirty you're in the right place whether you're interested in having a unique off-road vehicle ready to hit the trails or that daily driver that's also a weekend warrior, this show is for you. Find out more information about the Jeep Talk Show at jeeptalkshow.com. And, you know, by the way, it's an excellent place to tell people to go if they want to hear the Jeep Talk Show like you enjoy listening to it. So how are we doing, Jeeper? I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'm going to share with you the loophole that's out there yeah, to get a brand new Wagoneer for less than anybody else. And Jeep just sold more of what than who? And later, we'll be talking about departure angles and hand tow hitches in Tech Talk. I'm Tammy, a.k.a. Jeep Mama, and I'm going to share my top five tips to protect yourself from a con man mechanic. Ooh, good one. Hi, I'm Tony, and tonight we have an interview that I've been excited to bring to you. How would you like to have a CO2 air tank in your rig for about $400 or less? Well, Sam with OffRoadAirBuddy.com is going to tell you how you can do it. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. And it's time to get that luxury tow rig. Now, if you're looking uh, to get yeah. the, the best... <laughs> 
possible deal on a new Jeep Wagoneer? Well, we found a potential loophole worth knowing about. Based on dealer incentive bulletins and inside information through the dealer networks and Jeep official, Chrysler Capital's 72-month financing rate is actually lower than its 60-month interest rate, providing a way to lower both your overall cost and monthly payment. Through May 2nd only, the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer Series 2 and Series 3 offer 0% APR financing for 72 months. At the same time, the 60-month rate on the same SUV is 0.9% APR. If you assumed a shorter loan would be more affordable, which in most instances happens to be the case, you could end up paying more money. On a $70,000 SUV, this difference in financing incentives could have a major effect on your potential bottom line costs. First, the total estimated cost of a loan is over $1,600 cheaper with the six-year loan. Second, there's a massive price difference in the projected monthly payments when comparing both financing options. With the five-year loan, the estimated payment would come out to about, oh, just under $1,200 per month before taxes and fees. But with the six-year option, the same SUV would cost you just $972 per month. That's a difference of over $200 per month with a lower overall cost. Simply for choosing the six-year financing deal. Now, it's not every day that we see a quirk like this, so I had to bring it to your attention. Longer loans typically entail higher interest rates, but that isn't the case here, at least for the time being. While it's tempting to decry the prevalence of longer and more expensive car loans these days, this could present an opportunity to get a great deal. Now, having said that, there are a few downsides worth knowing about if you do decide that this is right for you. Like most financing deals, this is going to require top-tier credit to qualify. There's also another important catch in that the more luxurious Grand Wagoneer is completely excluded. The same goes for the more affordable Wagoneer Series 1. Still, for a buyer looking to buy now, it could be a surprisingly good time to do so. That is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. A I long mean, time. Geez. And for quite a while, yeah. But, I mean, if you've got the warranty behind it, if you're not driving that many miles, um, geez, I don't, I don't know. This... It certainly is an attractive option, and, and to be able to have that option to save that kind of dough, especially over that kind of a range, to get that kind of a vehicle, right. I'm sure there's be a lot of people that are uh, are going to be heading down oh, to the deal. No, it's a good catch. I mean, that's really, really a good catch, uh, and I appreciate you bringing that to the show. My uh, Rubicon was a six-year payment. Yeah. So the, the thing that gets me is I remember when I was a kid, and my parents would uh, very rarely buy a new vehicle. I remember my mom going on and on about 48 months. I can't believe people will finance a vehicle for 48 months. We won't go longer than 36 because three years we want the vehicle paid off. And the, and I remember that uh, even to this day. And then these, I mean, you have to have these long duration uh, loans for people just to be able to afford the monthly payments. Yeah. Yeah, especially on uh, with the way the uh, prices on on vehicles are nowadays. I mean, seventy thousand dollars for for a Jeep. I mean, you know, granted, it's a full size Jeep. It's at the top of the line, you know, luxury base, you know, all that sort of stuff. But still, man, I mean, twelve hundred dollars a month for a car payment. It wasn't well that long ago I, in Texas. That was a, a a decent house, not a great house, but a decent house. Seventy thousand dollars. God, if only. I'm in Oregon. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it, it, we've had uh, low prices for a long time in Texas. Real estate market, yeah. Well, over the years, I've occasionally reported on all kinds of things, on things like annual or quarterly sales figures even for the Jeep brand. I know it's dry material, and I'm sure there's only about a 1% cross-section of our listener base that even pays attention to that sort of stuff. So instead of going over the numbers of how many Jeeps were sold and what segments and what percentage growth or loss it is compared to years prior, I thought it might be fun to focus on the only numbers that really matter right now. Now, you may or may not know this, but I'm not a huge electrification fan. <laughs> not for Jeeps and certainly not yet anyways. The right. grid is just not ready. Now, that being said, I can appreciate the technology, and I can appreciate it even more when it beats up other vehicles in its segment. Now, for the first quarter of 2022, the Jeep Wrangler 4XE was the best-selling hybrid vehicle in the United States. The Jeep Wrangler 4XE outsold the next best-selling hybrid SUV, the Toyota RAV4 Prime, by a massive margin. Now, obviously, if you had to choose between the two, well... It's not really a choice, is it? <laughs> now, now, clearly, the Toyota RAV4 is just completely outclassed by the Wrangler 4XE. I mean, even in that 4XE trim. Either way, congratulations to Jeep for once again beating the sales numbers of Toyota. I, is that a uh, unusual thing? I mean, Toyota cars, I know, but... 
Well, um, since Jeep, uh, its debut of uh, in 2020, uh, the 4XE has already outsold the Prius, which is awesome. Really, that's amazing. Yes, and and now the uh, and now one of other uh, one of Toyota's other vehicles in a, in a, uh, a flagship uh, model as well with the Rav4 Prime. So yeah, so this is the is Rav4 a, this Prime like the same category as the 4XE? Yeah, is that so? Just. I, it, well, it, it, I guess kind of it is, but... Kind of it is, yeah. Um, I mean, geez, segment for segment, I, it, there really is no comparison, is no, there? But there's it there's is. a Jeep and there's everything else. Right, yes, right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I guess so, what I I'm mean, saying is the Toyota RAV4, their version of their SUV? Uh, it's one of them. I think they've got three or something uh-huh. like that. They've got the, the RAV4, the 4Runner, and then the Sienna or Sequoia. I don't freaking know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a they tree. You hug it. <laughs> yeah. So Tammy, uh, Tammy, you had a Prius. What did you think of it uh, when you were driving that around? Did I really? <laughs> uh, since I don't re- the, since I don't the head injury, that. you've become She's a lot more blocked. interesting. <laughs> She's blocked that out of her out of her yeah. mind. It's like, did that really happen? I don't know. <laughs> did I did I? You're supposed one to be time, you're supposed to be insulted and incensed oh. that I would suggest that you would have a Prius. <laughs> Well, I b- rented cars a lot lately, so I thought, God, did one was one of my rentals a Prius? I think you'd know. You'd be going mm-hmm, just to have the motor noise. Correct. She's trying to keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not something you want to get the word out. So, in looking for news surrounding the world famous Jeep Beach event happening at the iconic Daytona Beach, I stumbled across another event. I I, I just oh I can't believe I've heard of this. <laughs> Combines. Three of my most favorite things in the world. Jeeps, beaches, and smoked meat. Oh, I was thinking S- naked, uh, half-naked chicks. Oh. <laughs> Smoke on the beach is what it is called. And this annual barbecue competition and Jeep show is hosted by the Myrtle Beach Shriners Club and the Myrtle Beach Jeep Club. They've got dozens, if not hundreds, of food vendors and barbecue competitors. Live music and, of course, Jeeps. The smell. All on All the smell. Beach in South Carolina, right? And if memory serves me right, I think Carolinas know a little something-something about barbecuing. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not now, beef barbecue as God intended it to be. Now, unfortunately, the event is, well, it's already over. It happened Easter Easter weekend, April Aww. 15th and 16th. I know, I know. Now, but this event is now on my bucket list. Yes. As in, I'm probably going to need to carry a bucket with Chow me bucket. if I'm going to have a chance <laughs> of eating all the food that I want to while I'm there. <laughs> Jeeps, beaches, and smoked meat. I mean, I could die a happy man there. Myrtle Beach, I'm coming for you. And and, and a nice metal bucket, because you don't want to start chewing on the bucket and have it come apart, and then you don't have a bucket for more food. <laughs> I will think I'll have plenty to chew on while I'm there. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, could you imagine? Yeah, some, of the, some of the pictures that I've seen are, are, I mean, just as far as the eye can see, just nothing but pit after pit after pit. And it's just like, just uh, the smell. I mean, could you imagine for miles, there's probably wa- mouths watering everywhere. I just, so so I have this mental image of like Hannibal Lecter on the, the little dolly with the- No, the, I'll need a mask. The yes. mask and everything. No, no, follow me. Follow me here for a second. Chain and and what you do is you, you chain up your anorexic and you take them out there and just wheel them down by all the barbecue stuff until they get to the end and they have to eat something. And then you monitor them, of course, afterwards. Yeah, I'm going to need an EKG after this one. <laughs> That's the only monitoring I'm probably going to need after this. But no, seriously, I, I can't believe it. it and we used to have a, a, a segment on the show called Wheeling Wear, where I would talk about two or three, five yeah. different uh, you know, events that were coming up either that week or in the, in the near future. Uh, and it was a regular segment on the show. And, and I mean, I learned uh, and, and reported about literally hundreds of Jeep events every year uh, that were that were happening. Now we there were slow months. You know, obviously during the winter things would slow down quite a bit. Uh, but nonetheless, I had never heard of this. Now this is an annual uh, an annual event. It's been going on for a while. I couldn't tell. Uh, I looked into it. I couldn't see when they started this thing. But they say it's back. So obviously uh, this was happening oh. before COVID. Oh, yeah, COVID. Uh, and and now they're back. Now that the the pandemic is over. Uh, and they're and they're 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 full full swing, man. No, it's going to be awesome. I'm sure it was awesome. I can't wait till next year. So speaking of the pandemic is off, 
my son Ben was on a flight back from Minnesota to Maryland on Monday. And they were barbecuing? When, My God, that's dangerous. <laughs> they and they <laughs> they announced it in the middle of the flight up in the air and he said the plane erupted in cheers. Oh, everybody loves barbecue. And um then at his volleyball game today, normally they have to stand on opposite end of the court after the game and like wave at each other. You know how like you're supposed to high five <laughs> the team. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, what are they doing? But today they finally got to do this hand slap line with the other oh, team. Right on. Good. I'm like, finally, we're back to normal. You know how pregnancies went up after World War II? Oh no. Mark my words. Oh, are they going to go up because of the pandemic is off now? People are not afraid to yeah, touch each other? Have, they don't have to wear a mask or any yeah. other protection. <laughs> <laughs> but barbecue. Oh, gosh. Yes. Can you imagine how many people at that, uh, at that event were getting barbecue all over their mask? <laughs> trying to eat it quick. <laughs> have you ever seen people on an airplane drinking the water through their mask? <laughs> Seriously, twice. No, I saw it. come on. Yes. I'm well, like, what are you doing? You know doing? the mistake you made, so you just kind of go with it and hope nobody notices. It was like the time I walked into the girls' bathroom in uh, in high school. <laughs> just walk out like I meant to. Go yeah. Ahead. <laughs> and it, oh, it was two Lord. girls waiting for me to laugh at me. <laughs> uh, too much, too much. Well, Jeeper, if uh, you got a news tip, you know about something we should be reporting on, or you, know, you want to share your two cents about something you just heard on the show. Anyway, either way, be sure to let us know what's on your mind or what you got to say. You can do it by phone or by email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to reach out. And stick around. Coming up later in the show, as Tony has uh, alluded earlier on, we've got an interview with Sam Heron from Off-Road Air Buddy. They are bringing you compressed onboard air for a half the industry standard. And, I, and you'll hear this in the interview, but I just want to mention, this isn't some fly-by-night organization that's coming in no. at a cheap price. They yeah. d- they have a carbonation business. So it's been around for drink, like 100 years or something? Dr- yeah, drinks, uh, 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 beer places. I, I didn't know that you carbonated beer. Uh, <laughs> but all kinds of things. So they've been in this business, and uh, Sam, being a, an avid jeeper, said, you know, I could do this this uh, CO2 air tank and save people some money. So it's it's not just something that some guy came up in his, his garage and is doing. Uh, so it's... it's uh, it, I, I'm very excited about it, and it's right here in the Houston area. I'm hoping to go over and uh, visit them I and actually see this stuff. I was wondering about that. I was wondering how close he was to you. So It's not, yeah, it's I, not check- super close. It's, it'll be a pretty good drive, but I got a nice uh, gladiator. It, it's real easy to drive ah. over there. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, coming up at Tech Talk, long wheelbase hangups and what to do about them. Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show is in my weekly rotation. Look forward to it every week, each and every Friday. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. I support a great podcast. been a lifelong Jeeper myself. Continue to learn with each and every episode that I listen to. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. Absolutely. If you like Jeeps, anything to do with Jeeps, I like it for the, the technical, clear content, uh, advice, and learning. So we have a uh, event, Jeep Talk Show, Texas event. Uh, I guess you could call it uh, Part Du, uh, if you remember that movie. Uh, and it's going to be at Hidden uh, Hidden Falls Adventure Park near Marble Falls, Texas. We went there last September, uh, and uh, Josh uh, was was there at that event, had a great time. It was a beautiful park. I, I think, uh, I mean, Josh comes from a beautiful part of the country. Uh, part of the country and uh he was still able to appreciate the uh, the beauty there of uh, t- the texas hill country so no, absolutely. you guys got all that uh all that shelf formation and 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 rock like we don't have up here in the northwest what is that caliche Kal- 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 yeah caliche is what i've always called it but uh, yeah uh, so really interesting uh, geological differences just uh you know regionally speaking it makes it fun to, to wheel it something does. different uh, so oh, it was Different, all right. <laughs> so let's don't get on the cigars again. Uh, so <laughs> it was uh, it, it was a lot of fun, and if you if you can make it, we would love 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 to have you come out. Uh, actually, we have a a channel dedicated to this off road event on our Discord server. If you'd like to join our Discord server, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, and you'll see the invite there. And it's a great place to find out what's going on with it. But uh, we'll be talking about it here on the show too. But it's June the fourth. 
Uh, and we're, we, we, it's, we already have a bunch of people coming down. But my point here is, is that if you can't come down, maybe you can't swing it because it's just too far and the, the gas money would be too much, save your gas money, but help the, the event by becoming a paid subscriber. And you can, uh, I'm sure you can become a paid subscriber for a fraction of the cost that it would be for the, the amount of fuel that you would need to use to drive down. You know, some, some folks have flown down to uh, join the event and uh, we've got uh, members inside the, the Discord server that has uh, picked up the people that have flown in and then they've come out and, and uh, just G-popped and uh, rode with other people. So That's there's many, what I'll be doing. There's many ways that you can do this and we'd love to have you come out. And uh, it, it, it was just it was just a blast. I'm really looking forward to it. And this, and this year's going to be bigger. Oh, yeah. Bigger and better and bigger. Did we mention it's going to be bigger? It's in Texas. It has to be bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I gotta tell you, I'm got a month on my uh, Nexon Rodian MTs, and they're doing great. I love them, although I am yet to really put them through their paces off road. Hopefully, that'll be remedied soon. And my Counteract Balancing Beads, uh, I didn't think they would work, but they do. They they really balance the tire. It's, it's amazing. They're now my Second most favorite beads. Yes, get your mind out of the gutter. My favorite beads are juju beads. But that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that scientists have just developed a food that reduces a sex drive. Yeah, it's called wedding cake. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. Oh, he didn't say his sex drive. He just said sex drive. So that makes sense. <laughs> You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I just, I just, it's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yeah, All right. On this segment, I'm going to focus on your big ass. Okay, not yours specifically. <laughs> you were looking you at me, got- you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a Jeep Gladiator or pretty much any non-Wrangler Jeep and you've taken it off-road, well, you kind of know what I'm talking about. The Jeep JT Gladiator pickup truck is a great rig. Honestly, it really is. But the bed overhang is is a bit much. The same goes for the back end of a Cherokee or a Grand Cherokee for that matter, or even the old Wagoneers. Jeep did this by design in order to maximize the truck's hauling capabilities. Well, that's all well and good when you want to transport a load of bricks, but I bet these Jeeps would like to hit the trails more than they would like to carry masonry. With all that body hanging out past the rear axle, it makes for very poor departure angles. A departure angle is the maximum ramp angle from which the vehicle can descend without taking on any damage, and is defined as the angle between the ground and the line drawn between the rear tire and the lowest hanging part of the vehicle at the rear overhang. In the case of the JT, or even the XJ, or ZJ, or WJ, or any other long wheelbase Jeep, well, this would be the tow hitch. Now, check out some wheeling videos of longer wheelbase Jeeps, and you'll see that they'll drag that ass on the ground as they climb up something and slam it down hard as they come down off shelves or off rocks. The only way around this? I'll get the body as high in the air as you can. Big lift, big tires. Either that, or start moving the rear axle back. Or start shaving the rear end. And honestly, who likes shaving ass? Seriously though, this would include things like moving the rear bumper inward and upward, comp cutting the body, or chopping the body and moving the whole rear end forward. Essentially, a whole lot of nasty body work that you definitely don't want to do yourself without a lot of prior fabrication experience. And, well, well, it will definitely cost a fortune to have a shop do it. Jeep really had it right with this year's concept Jeep, Bob which had a bobbed pickup bed, making it less functionable for hauling, but incredibly more capable off-road, with exponentially better departure angles. Regardless, if you plan on using that hitch for what it was intended for someday, well, maybe it might be a good idea to keep it out of harm's way a little bit more. And as per usual, well, we have a whole plethora of aftermarket solutions to make that happen. But they are not all created equal. And here's where this segment is going to have a little bit of a crossover episode with the must-have pick of the week for your Jeep, and I talk about a specific product. Kurt makes one, and you'd think that a major hitch manufacturer would be able to get something like trailer hitch armor right, but no, theirs looks like the only way it would work is if you were going in reverse. It's just a 6-inch square piece of steel bent slightly and welded to a tube that would go into your receiver. 
draw tight has virtually the same exact design on theirs and they want more for it in fact there's at least a half a dozen manufacturers out there that will sell you the same exact design with a different name on it for around 50 bucks now rock slide engineering sells something called a rear hitch slider and this is basically just a backwards shovel that you mount to your jeep I mean, if you want to snag, catch, and get hung up on virtually everything you drive over or plow the most amazing channel behind you in the snow, well, then this is the unit for you. <laughs> it does look kind of cool, I'll give them that, but it's got to weigh a ton, and it looks horrible to try and attach or remove. A company called Body Armor sells another reverse shovel design that is just a much larger bent plate attached to a table, or a tube, rather. Oh, sure, it has a nice, nice functional step incorporated into the upper half of the design, but all that does is add weight. And on top of that, none of these units look like anything that could be used in any kind of recovery outside of pulling a go-kart across the parking lot. Screw all that nonsense. What does the situation really call for? Well, let's break it down. If you wheel and you wheel hard, well, you probably play in the rocks or your terrain has more steps than it does mud. Well, then you need something like some hitch armor. Something low profile, but highly functionable, right? Obviously, it's going to need to be extremely tough, but easy to use. It's going to need to be able to be removed and stored very easily as well. So it has to be small then as well, right? It would be a bonus if you didn't have to take it out to exchange it for recovery point too. So whatever image you have in your head at this point, I bet it closely resembles the product made by a company called 4122. The 4122 hitch slider protects your hitch receiver from damage. It's a one-piece design. It has a ramped underside skid that is allow allows you to smoothly glide over obstacles instead of catching up on a plate or damaging a receiver. The 4122 hitch, re uh, hitch slider rather also incorporates a generous one-inch soft shackle or D-ring toe point into the design for added functionality. The hitch slider is available in five different ceramic coated finishes, armor black, desert orange, electric blue, stealth gray, and red. They also have an unfinished version for that raw machined look. I know, it's all the other colors have a really cool name except red. You don't have to have a cool because name for red. Red, no, is, red, red is, is all by itself. Cool. Like, it's wow. Just not cool. They need purple though. And where's uh, pink? Well, you could take the uh, the raw aluminum one and then have it uh, anodized uh, yourself to whatever color you want or uh, spray paint it or uh, have it powder coated even. Oh, somebody will. Every unit is precision machined from a solid billet of 6061 T6 aircraft grade aluminum for a lifetime of rust free use. They are 100% made in the USA in Southern California. Now, I've seen these things in use and yes, they can definitely take the beating. All that vehicle weight slamming down on the rocks time and time again. They just take it. The only thing that happens is a little scratching of the ceramic coating on the underside. But these are made of aluminum, and aluminum does not rust. And those scratches and gouges? That's just a real badge of honor to show just how hard you really wheel. The price point is a little steep. I'll give you that. For now, they cost $189 and come with free shipping. But being able to use that hitch for something else down the road without rust or a bent tube... And having a little bit of extra armor to boot, man, that's priceless. You know what you need for this, uh, Josh? A uh, bolt from Bolt Lock. Lockable oh, yeah, there you go. To hold yeah, that it thing in would there. never have to move ever again. You could just weld that into the receiver. <laughs> well, you certainly don't want it walking off. And at $189, it's likely to, uh, to, to walk off. So, yeah, yeah get and you one of those little uh, receiver, uh, locking receiver pins from Bolt. And, and if you can do it when you use the same key as your Jeep, all the better. Absolutely. Yeah, these things are definitely eye-catching. They are low profile. They are compact. Oh, it's uh, obviously yeah. lightweight. Yeah, and, and if you see videos of these things in action, you'll you'll understand exactly where I'm coming from when I recommend these as a must-have and and uh, and a solution for for long wheelbase vehicles. Now, Tony, I I I know that you're probably going to be dragging that hitch the next time you're yeah. over at uh, at Hidden Falls. Is this something that you would entertain the idea? Oh, I'd love to have in? this. I'd love to have this, but $189 is well, $189. I'd rather get some uh, inner inner fender uh, liners uh, for you know a, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, to me, that would be a little more uh, useful. I see the price point on this. Uh, I, I I would pay ninety nine dollars for this. This yeah. is a hundred dollar. Yeah. This is a hundred dollar unit all day long. Now, talked with the company. Uh, the actual cost of one of the billets that these things are machined out of 
their raw cost alone is 50 bucks. That's not including right. the tooling to machine it, the time involved in the labor, not to mention the shipping and the packaging and all of that sort of stuff. You can see where all of a sudden $189 oh, uh, starts. Oh, absolutely. They're going to make a profit. They have to have insurance. There's all kinds of things. I don't begrudge them the price. It's just as far as this price compared to something else I could buy for you know uh, less than $100 more. Right. Yeah. I mean, so if you've got a long wheelbase vehicle, though, this might be something that you're that you're interested in. Uh, now, obviously, you know, two hundred bucks is a good chunk of change, and uh, you know, throwing that kind of money around for something as small as this, uh, not not what I would call top of the sexy list, you know. Uh, but that little piece of armor, that little extra little bit of assurance, might be worth it in the long run. Oh, and if you tow things, like you say, to keep that uh, that hitch damage free, uh, I mean, that's going to be a lot of a, a lot of frustration you don't have to go through. Yeah, because uh, I don't know if you remember, Tony, when you were configuring your Jeep, what the the, the tow hitch, what that, what what, what kind of an a addition that was, how much of an option that was. Well, I you, the, tow, the, the tow package, package it was about three fifty. Yeah. The the max tow was a couple of thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's different because of the axles and stuff. So, but you can yeah. you can just put a tow package on a Gladiator for I think it was like three fifty. But with the the tow package, it was like a two hundred and forty amp alternator. Uh, the Rubicon axles so minus the lockers, uh, several things. It was just a whole big package, and for, it was either, for the Max package. You're saying Max tow, yeah. yeah. So three fifty would have been the, uh, the 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 basic charge for uh, a uh, you know for the the, where so you, compared, the thing you would put this in. Yeah. So compare. So three hundred fifty bucks for a hitch replacement compared to one hundred eighty nine dollars. Um, you know, I mean, the, the you could look at it that way. Uh, as far as a, a cost benefit analysis, if you you know come down on that hitch uh, you know too hard one too many times, and now all of a sudden you can't get a a ball in there anymore, or you you can't get a recovery point in, or you know something like that. So uh, yeah, three hundred fifty bucks is a is a good chunk of change to throw at a, at it to re to replace a hitch that well just got bent a little bit. Well, it it, it would be nice to be dragging on this instead of the bumper or the oh, hitch yeah. or you know so. Something that, that's easily removable. Well, I know this sounded a little bit more like a uh, a must-have segment than a Tech Talk, but if you have anything to add or you have anything to, that you think that I should be covering on Tech Talk, please just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send me a message. Let me know what it is that you're stuck on your build or a topic that you would like me to talk about. This segment of the show is brought to you by Lug Nuts. There's nothing like Lug Nuts to secure a wheel to a Jeep. Get yours now and be sure to ask for genuine Lug brand nuts for your Jeep wheels. That's Lug Nuts. You know, I was thinking you could get you some nice, uh, like a three foot piece of two inch by two inch square tubing, drill a hole mm -hmm. in it, and then you could take that, that uh, hitch protector off. The, your uh, your hitch, put it in the the four inch pipe, and then use it just to beat the hell out of people. It would be a <laughs> nice heavy chunk. <laughs> You'd be a skull crusher, man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. Alrighty ho, boys and girls, it's time for, uh, time for another Cheap Talk Show interview, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking with Sam uh, of OffRoadAirBuddy.com, and I'm going to tell you right off the top, uh, it's a air tank, like power tank, but half the cost. Got you interested? OffRoadAirBuddy.com. So Sam and his wife, Christy, work at a family business called Carbononics. Is it Carbononics? It's uh, Carbonics. Carbonics. Uh, Inc. that started in 1947 dealing with dry ice and CO2. I bet you play with the dry ice a lot. You, uh, you probably got uh, bored with it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to admit that. <laughs> they, <laughs> they started Off-Road Air Buddy as a division of the company in 2018, uh, but with generations of CO2 experience. Sam drives a black Jeep of the family, and in his spare time, he likes tracking down squeaks and rattles on his Jeep. <laughs> God bless you. I hate that. <laughs> and again, you can go to, uh, and I urge you to go over to offroadairbuddy.com right now and start checking out their products. Sam, uh, thanks a lot for being here. And why didn't we get Christy? I'd really, really, really talk to Christy. Yeah, everyone would rather talk to Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Or one of the dogs. I love. I loved interacting <laughs> with your dogs whenever I uh, met you at Lone Star Jeep Invasion uh, in uh, 2021. It's more expensive to interview. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So, um, the uh, are you going to be out at Lone Star uh, Jeep Invasion again this year? Uh, man, we have a big uh, industry business uh, convention in Florida at the same exact time, so I'm going to have to miss this one. It'll be the first one we've missed. Oh, that's too bad. Well, anyway, I was uh, hoping to see you out there, but uh, maybe next year. So, uh, now, now tell me something. Um, this, everybody compares air tanks, you know, like, uh, well, power tank, power tank, power tank. But, of course, the first thing I noticed when I got to your site and was looking at the tanks, uh, power tank is around $800, and your 10-pound tank is around $400. How in the hell can you sell these things for $400? You know, Power Tank makes a fantastic product, and they really pave the road in this market. They've been doing it for many years, and um, I've got nothing for but respect for their product. But when I saw the price tag, I was floored because I'm in the business, and I know how much these materials cost to put together. And at four hundred dollars a a set, a kit, you know, I'm I'm still making a little bit. I'm I'm not going to get rich off of this. But I'm kind of doing it more as kind of a hobby and a fun thing to do on the side. But it's it's still a small profit, even at four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, the the main business if, uh, for our carbonics is going out and uh, loading up. I guess you guys do repairs on uh, uh, machines, beer uh, fountains, uh, soft drink uh, fountains, and also to uh, take uh, the uh, the CO two can- uh, canisters out there. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. We deliver CO2 tanks to restaurants and bars and all kinds of businesses. We build liquor, beer, and soda systems, do repair and maintenance, deliver dry ice all over town to hospitals and clinics and labs. So that's the main focus of our business. But this is a fun project that keeps me playing with Jeeps and going to rallies and, you know. And you're only in this because you're a money to cover it. Yeah, you're only in this because you're a Jeeper. And you you knew you saw a way to uh, get things cheaper for jeepers and make a little a little bit of profit at the same time. Yeah, that's absolutely it. Good. That's I like that. And uh, and and everybody loves hearing everything is uh, from the USA. Is all all your goodies from USA, or uh, you got stuff from uh, overseas in, in your kit? You know, all of my major products: the tank, the regulator, the regulator guard. Um, they're all from the USA. Um, actually, the regulators made in San Antonio. Oh, very cool. Um, but the um, air gauge, that's from overseas. I j- just can't find one anywhere near the price I need to keep it at $400. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll say 97% USA made, which is great. And yeah, that's about right. So um, what makes... I don't know if this is a fair question to Power Tank. What what makes <laughs> a Power Tank worth four hundred dollars more than what you're selling yours for? Well, since I'm kind of their competitor, can I just say nothing? Sure, <laughs> you can say whatever you like. I'm just trying to, you know, if I was going to buy a tank and an air tank, a CO2 tank, and I wanted to to have something that was going to be was going to do what I needed it to do, and I I can I can spend eight hundred dollars. And think, well, it's expensive. People are willing to spend that much money for it. But I sure do like the idea of this $400 tank. Uh, what, what am I losing here? It, it, in, well, from from what my research, doing. it doesn't look like I'm, I'm missing anything except more money. Well, quite quite honestly, Power Tank does have um, you know a few things to recommend it that we can't compete with. For example, their bracket is fantastic. It's super strong. If you're going to mount your tank on the roll bar, then... You could buy my kit and then buy their bracket and have the best of both worlds. Uh, they also powder coat their tanks. Um, ours are also brand new tanks. They're also guaranteed for a lifetime. They ha- These tanks have to be tested every five years. And Power Tank says if one of their tanks fails a test and it has not been damaged, it just happens to be defective and fails, they'll replace it. We do the same thing. Uh, you can get mine powder coated for about 150 extra dollars. You're still coming in yeah, under still cheaper. the $800 <laughs> price tag. Um, but their bracket's probably the one thing that I can't compete with. Um, I've got a variety of brackets that I offer. And the kit itself comes with kind of a rubber quick fist type bracket. Uh-huh. Uh, when I was doing my research to develop this, I discovered that everybody has a different situation in their rig. And you get 10 people 
maybe two of them will be mounting it the same on the roll bar and everyone else is totally different. So rather than try to have something fabricated to compete with that, I just thought I'll just try to keep the price under 400. So the, 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 the solution you have for mounting, is it a good solid mount? It's a good solid mount. If you have something solid to screw that rubber bracket onto, mm -hmm. Um, if you don't, then you're going to have to get creative or buy one of my optional brackets that I've got. I've got several other types of brackets for sale on the website. Um, but most, most, I would say five or six out of 10 people that buy my kit, find a way to securely mount that rubber bracket. And that's, they're perfectly happy with that. Okay. The, so the key to that one is to mount it to where it wraps around the tank in the middle, not at the bottom or top because you want the weight distribution even on it. Sure. And and then I tell people, you know, it doesn't look, it's not going to be like show quality looks, but use a couple bungee cords. And the fantastic thing is that on a rollover or you're hitting the rocks and the Jeep's shaking and moving around, those cords won't snap or break or fracture. They'll give a little and then, you know, elastically come back to where it was. So it's a lot safer than a cheaper metal bracket or putting a metal band on it to, in my opinion right right so uh for the oh and the other thing because i remember uh, one of our uh, discord uh, users i put your your website up on our, our discord server i'll ask the guys to check it out and because i don't know anything about air tanks uh and uh, i said you know what's the big difference here and the only thing the only feedback i got was is that it's a the biggest one they have is a 10 pound tank and uh, I need a 15 pound tank, uh, that, and, and that's why I'm going power tank. Uh, that in the name, you know, you're buying the name. You, you, everybody knows oh, yeah. that. So he, he went with a 15 pound tank because he's got 37 inch tires. Well, you know, I probably need to update the website and make it a little more clear, I guess. I was hoping more people would call and we could customize it. But yeah, we have 15 pound tanks, 20 pound tanks. 35 pound tanks and we can put a 50 pound tank if you want to find a way to fit that in a vehicle <laughs> up, up armored humvee or something we'll get you a 50 pound tank oh very cool well you know i'm just thinking if you have one of those uh, airsoft guns you would uh, have uh, a machine gun uh, of airsoft pellets that you could shoot with that tank <laughs> yeah you, you couldn't really walk around with it but if you have a base oh. that you're defending sure oh no you have to do it like a big 50 cal on a jeep you know it's, <laughs> just run it from the tank we give you a 200 foot air hose so you can run around a little bit so okay so let's compare uh he's i think he got his uh, power tank for 800 dollars. so comparing uh what would be the cost of a 15 pound tank uh ballpark because you don't actually have a price on your on your website for it how much more would that be? Because the ten pound I, is four hundred. Another thirty five dollars, so he'd be looking at four thirty five. Oh my god, tank. that's so simple! And then uh, a twenty pound tank. And then that's another thirty five dollars. So we're cool. looking at four seventy for a twenty pound tank. So in the let's talk about the the kit that you have or the kits that you have on your website, which is offroadairbuddy.com. Uh, what comes in the kit? And, and is that the only way you can get it? Isn't a kit or can you buy individual items? No, we sell all these pieces individually. You'll save a little bit of money if you buy it all as a kit. But if you don't need everything in the kit, then you're welcome to just buy what you need individually. And, th and then you're probably going to come out way under $400 doing it that way. If, you know, if you don't need most of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So what's all in the kit? Then the 10 pound kit, let's say. Um, well, you get the uh, a brand new tank that's been recently tested, so you'll be able to go five years before you have to test it again. Um, a regulator. I I went through about fourteen regulators trying to find a regulator that would fit the budget and still deliver good airflow and not freeze up. And even some that are much more expensive would freeze up. So that's the tap right made in San Antonio. There's a steel guard that goes around that. You get a rubber bracket that you can mount on a solid surface somewhere to hold your tank. You get some bungee cords. You get the air gauge that's good for 250 PSI, 300 PSI, 25 foot of tubing. Uh, you get a blow gun so you can clean out the back of your Jeep if that, you know, something that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Four brass tire deflators. And then we usually throw in a few little extras for every kit too. Just some uh, 
swag. Sure. No, I, I know your buddy said he had 37 inch tires, so he got a 15 pound tank. My 35, I don't have 37s. All I can say is my 35s depends on how low I take them and then how high I'm airing them up. But I can do that 10 times, all four tires 10 times if I'm going from, say, like uh, 12 PSI up to maybe 30 PSI. Right. And because you guys right. actually sell CO2, you can actually fill these tanks uh, at your facility. We can fill them. They're going to spend about 25 bucks to get a 10-pound filled up, maybe 29 bucks for a 20-pound. If somebody wants one of those 20 pounds, mm -hmm. we can also uh, custom fabricate dip tubes so the tanks can be mounted sideways and still draw the gas from the headspace oh. at the top side of the tank instead of the tank having to be upright, too. Interesting. That's really cool because uh, I just assumed you could do that. I had no idea. I'm glad you pointed that out. So hey, A lot of people will put them sideways, and then when they open up their... Uh, and will on the valve of the tank they're getting a uh, liquid co2 because the airspace now is at the top side of the tank sure that makes sense uh and i'm sure liquid in the inside the tires it works out really well the slosh factor <laughs> <laughs> uh it um it sublimates instantly at room temperature to gas but it'll freeze up the regulator freeze up the hose could crack the hose because it's a negative 109 degrees so you're going to wear out all, all your rubber. It's not great for your tire to get that cold. So what you're saying yeah. is if you're out at Hidden Falls on a hot, summery Texas day, you can uh, turn your uh, your tank sideways and cool off real quick. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not saying that. <laughs> no, no. You shouldn't. I just said it. Don't try this at home. <laughs> right. Or at Hidden Falls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see a downside to this. I mean, I see that it's a, a, a cost savings. Uh, you don't get the power tank name, uh, but you get. It sounds like to me you get something that works and fills up your <laughs> fills up your your tires. And uh, and if you it, have a if you have a show Jeep, um, I can get it powder coated for an extra one fifty. This don't one hundred and fifty. My God, I think I could rattle can it and look if it looked nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rattle can it for free. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a that's a steal. So, um, uh, is there something I'm missing here? Why would I? Why in God's green earth would I, I go and spend eight hundred dollars if I can get something for well, you the same for a fifteen pound tank for for what'd you say like uh, around four hundred and thirty five dollars? You know, you get, the name's important. Do you want uh, Red Rock parts on your Jeep? You know, or metal cloak. <laughs> you know, right. The, the, uh, they do make a nice product. It's powder coated. Their bracket's awesome. And they have a, a very well recognized name. Um, I think my logo looks pretty cool. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not trying to harp on Power Tank. I'm just surprised at the price difference. And I'm. it's very attractive. And of course, you've made it attractive with a lower price. Uh, and the whole reason you got into this was I can do that for, for a lot cheaper. Um, but, right. but everybody's, right. but because of the little pro, I get the feeling if you were, if you were charging 600 or 650 for it, they go, Oh, well, this must be as good as the 800 one. That's, that's a reasonable savings, but you're trying to be a good guy and help some jeepers out. <laughs> and it's, and it's such a it, half the price you're going, they're going, what's wrong with this? There's gotta be something wrong with this. So I'm, I'm trying to get for myself personally, and also too, for the listeners out there, you know, uh, why should I try this? So, um, is there, Oh, uh, and like I said, I don't mean to harp on a power tank. Steve was a great guest, and, and I know power tank is a, a great product. Uh, but if there's a, an alternative, it, only, it not only does it um, mean that uh, there's a bigger market there for Jeepers or any off-road people, because you don't have to be a Jeeper to, to buy this from you, um, but also, too, it will it pushes uh, progress in the, in the environment. So it causes... A power tank to make a bigger, a better product as well, and of course you'll have to do the same thing. And the uh, us consumers are the ones that win in the end. So it's not a bad situation to have competition. Competition is good. So, yeah, I totally agree. And in, in fact, I've got some uh, metal fabricators right now experimenting with um, additional custom mounting brackets and shelving options too. So, and that's all because of you know there's other people out there on the market that have other tanks. So, um. um the, I have a water kit too. I don't th know if Power Tank offers that. Okay. Um, 
but I've got an onboard water system you can add on for, no, it's another $175, but it includes a self-priming uh, pump and 25 foot of hose and a spray nozzle that's selectable like your garden hose. And if you have a source of water, whether it's a, you know, a gallon jug or a big seven gallon container or whatever, you can just drop your supply line into that water and you have jet stream or a shower head or whatever you want. And uh, I use that all the time. That's a product that I thought would be more attractive to the off-roader. Uh, we don't sell a great number of those. I guess it's specific, a very niche market item. But I thought having a powered water on the trail would be pretty handy. I can see how it could be. Uh, obviously, the, I think... I think it's convenience factor uh, when you don't have to spend a lot of time airing up after your fun. So I can see how uh, people like that aspect of uh, getting the tear, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, tires aired back up. Uh, does the, the water system use the air tank at all? I'm sorry, the CO2 uh, tank. Yeah, it uses the CO2 tank to power the pump. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So it's it's something that you, an add-on that you sell for this so that you can... Uh, uh, you can get water out. I guess that it would be good for uh, overlanding too, because you could take a shower. Maybe you could hose down the significant other while uh, uh, in a private situation. <laughs> <laughs> I use it for uh, when my tires are so packed with mud that I can't see the air valve. Ah, I can hit it with the jet stream, and my radiator's gotten muddy. I'm afraid when I drive back, I'll overheat. I can clean off my radiator. When people break down and they need some water for their radiator, I've got that. If I go to the beach, I've got three big Italian Mastiffs, and uh, they're all dirty and sandy. I can wash them off before I let them get back in the Jeep. <laughs> That'll <So>. teach them. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't teach them. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, but you can you can wish, right? Well, I, right. Don't, I don't see a downside to this. It sounds like to me, unless you are just really insane about powder coating, that this is a, a really, really great deal. Yeah, I like to think it's a great deal. I've tried to make it as good as I possibly could with a $400 kind of limit in mind for the 10 pound kit, which mm -hmm. is the average size tank people want. Right. Um, and, and you think that's uh, for your, your own use on your 35s, uh, that's uh, 10 tire uh, air ups based on how far you uh, let the pressure out and how much you raise it back up. So, so your tires may count, your tire count may vary. Um, right. well, this is the thing I was going to ask you. Who checks these uh, these tanks every five years? Where do you go to have the, the, the tank checked? Well, we are a hydro test testing facility, um, but you have to go to a federally sanctioned testing facility. Um, I don't know where to find one if we weren't one. Well, you don't have to look. Uh, you know one. <laughs> yeah, if you're anywhere near Houston, you can come to my little shop in South Houston. Um carbonics on 506 nebraska street south houston not to plug myself no no it's that's but, fine i was actually going to mention but, that it, you were in the houston area and if you if you purchase uh at their facility you get uh the tank already filled but you can't ship them uh filled with co2 i wanted to mention that to everybody so and, and power tank has to do the same thing because uh the, the the listener that just got his power tank it's empty so he has to go find some place to fill it up yeah, unfortunately, that's a uh, DOT requirement. They have to ship empty just for safety reasons. Sure. Speaking of safety, I spent a lot of time testing the safety of these tanks. Um, I took a worst-case scenario tank from my own vehicle. I have a black Jeep. I painted it black. It's a steel tank. I left it in the summer heat and the sun. I overfilled the tank, which you're never supposed to do, um, just to make it worst-case scenario. So if the pressure ever gets over 3,000 PSI because of the heat in the tank, there's a little copper disc in the valve that will burst open, and that disc will vent the CO2 safely in three different directions so that your tank doesn't become a little torpedo. Right. Um, it'll, it sounds like a, a little 22 gun going off, not that loud, um, and you're, you'll see the gas venting in three different directions from that safety. Uh, I never could get mine to pop. Even in all the worst conditions, direct sunlight, windows rolled up, black Jeep, black tank. Very good. I like that. But still, if someone buys one, I do advise them to try to park in the shade in the summer or leave a window cracked. Just be aware that if your tank is completely full, you haven't filled up any of your tires yet since getting it filled, 
you don't want your tank to be over, you know, 130 degrees for very, very long. Now, you're a dog owner, so uh, I wouldn't, I, I know this isn't the proper thing to do, but if you had your animals in your vehicle with what, these tanks and it, uh, it, it vented, like what you're talking about, this would be potentially deadly for any occupants in the, in the vehicle at a certain level, wouldn't it? Yeah, if, um, if something happened, I guess uh, it'd be a, the dog would have to be pretty skilled to get past the handle and the steel guard to get the hand wheel and turn it but no no i mean if it if it popped if it vibrated uh, loose or something if the protection uh that you were just describing it it got too hot the heat probably would get the dog before the the co2 but if the safety popped you would hear it pop and you would hear the gas hissing out unless you weren't in the car at the time that's what i'm saying you're you got your car your vehicle locked up and you left your dog in it which is a no-no but it potentially could suffocate the the animal that's true. Um, but if you're leaving, like you said, if you're leaving your dog with all the windows rolled up in the summer and your Jeep gets to 130 degrees enough to, and stays there for 20, 30 minutes to pop the safety, the dog was probably already dead. Right. All right. Well, good. I just wanted to throw that out there. It just crossed my mind that this is not something that you want to uh, test um, with uh, any, anything that breathes air because that CO2, I would imagine it's quite a bit of CO2. Uh, not not every not every vehicle is airtight, and certainly Jeeps with soft tops are not. But uh, just wanted to throw that out there as far as uh, something for people to think about with any uh, CO2 tank they they would be using. So yeah, um, there's no no difference between mine or any others in this particular regard, and uh, it's a real concern. The CO2 is heavier than air; it'll displace oxygen. You can suffocate. It's odorless, tasteless. If you're in a small area and there's a leak that you can't hear, you wouldn't know it. You would just get. You would just feel tired, and then sit down, and then pass out, and have a then pass away. Have a great long nap. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wake, as I like to say, it, it's pretty scary when you wake up dead. Um, so, if, if my twenty pound tank leaked inside my Jeep, and then I opened my door, eighty percent of the CO two would just fall out of the door by the time I got in the vehicle. Um, but still. Um, I would still have a lot of CO2 in there, and I might not be able to breathe as easily as normal. Mm -hmm. Um, If I had my AC on fresh, then I'd be getting some fresh air in. Or if I had a window down, that would be even better. Oh, yeah. But it is something something to think about if you're going to be driving around in an enclosed vehicle with a CO2 tank in there. Some people will get a two and a half pound tank and put it under their seat as an emergency backup. And that's probably not enough in there. That if it popped or if it leaked, that it would do anything to you. But, you know, it's still it's something to be aware of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, interesting. Well, you know, I'm, uh, and, and the listeners know this, I'm not a big fan of tanks, CO2 tanks. I can get a compressor, and as long as the motor doesn't burn up, uh, it, you know, I don't have to fill it up. <laughs> it sucks it in from the atmosphere. But um, talking to you and hearing about these tanks, especially at a, a much lower price, uh, I can see how these tanks would be very attractive. Um, the uh, I'm just a cheap bastard. The 800 just scares the hell out of me. <laughs> you know what? I agree with you. If It depends on what your budget is. If, if your budget's $40, $50, go get an air compressor. Yep. You can still air your tires back up. I'll wait for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it may may take a while. That's all right. We're friends. I'll wait for you. Yeah, well, that's um, what that's what Steve said. He got tired of waiting to air up, <laughs> so he came up with a solution. You know, you, <laughs> you can't you can't pop a bead back on with the air compressor, and you can't run power tools, air tools with the air compressor. Um, but that's okay. You know, you can still air your tires back up, and that's ninety percent of what you'll be doing. Oh, and of course, you can run air lockers with this thing, uh, like you said, the uh, air tools, and I, and we did right. we didn't talk about that. So this thing will run air tools uh, for off the road fixes. Yes, I, I picked a regulator that had enough flow, enough volume throughput to be able to run up to medium duty air tools. Well, can you think of anything else? I mean, I'm pretty happy with what we've talked about here. I feel like I know a lot more about your uh, CO2 uh, tanks and all the goodies that come along with it. And from everything I can see, uh, I don't care about powder coating. And I'm probably going to do my own mount anyway or use the mount that comes with your stuff. So I'm more, I don't have a show Jeep. I mean, it's pretty, but I'm not so concerned about it looking really 
nice for an air tank. The air tank's there to air stuff up. Yeah, that's that's the market I'm aiming for. If if pretty is your main decision making factor for buying a tank, go look at Power Tank. They make some great ones. You know, or if you know already you're going to be mounting it on the roll bar and you want the best possible bracket, you can either buy theirs and use my tank or just buy their kit that comes with their bracket. Mm-hmm. But for everyone else that just wants a working system that they can rely on and it's faster than an air compressor, then I think it's a pretty good fit for, for that category of person. Uh, all right, Sam, I can hear people out there going, okay, here, take my money. You've sold me. How do I buy one of these things? So how do they go about getting one of these tanks from you? I'm, I'm so old fashioned. I hate to admit it. I don't have like a bunch of social media stuff. If they go to offroadairbuddy.com, our phone number's right there. They can call and ask for Sam or Chrissy and we'll take their order. We can talk to them about what all they want. We can try to customize it to be better what they need. Um, if they want to find us on Instagram or YouTube or something and look at some videos of people using them or some examples, then they can do that. Uh, those links are all on that website, offroadairbuddy.com. So how can people pay? I'm sure cash is one way, but how, how else can they pay? And it's going to be over the phone if they're, if they're not in the Houston area or traveling to the Houston area. How would they buy this uh, uh, over the phone and get it shipped out? I'm sure name, address, and then MasterCard, Visa, American Express, all the popular. Yeah, sure. We take all the normal credit, um, debit. If somebody wants to mail in a check, we'll wait till it clears and then send them their tank. Oh, that's cool. Um, you catch us at a show, we'll take cash. Um, a guy tried to try, uh, trade me for one of those power motorcycle things, those little mini motorcycles mm-hmm. at the Lone Star Rally. Did you see those at the last show? No, I didn't. Those were really cool. They were right across from me. I almost went for it. So I'll barter a little bit too. So uh, that just crossed my mind. Like It's like somebody was trying to trade me a Bronco. I don't care nothing about no Ford Broncos, <laughs> so I probably didn't pay attention to the little motorcycle either. <laughs> <laughs> So, got to get the the Bronco jabs in there, but but the air tank will work perfectly fine for the Ford Broncos too. So it doesn't have to be a Jeep, people. Uh, yeah, I mean you could put this on your work truck. I mean, you know, I mean it doesn't have to be, but it should. Yeah, yeah. I was I'm just make, trying to make the audience a wider a wider market for you. <laughs> I'm just playing. So, uh, oh, and you have a little uh, something something for the uh, listeners to get some uh, a little bit off, right? If somebody calls in and they mention the Jeep Talk Show that they heard it, I heard about it on the Jeep Talk Show, we'll give them twenty five dollars off whatever they purchase, you know, whichever kit they want to purchase. Excellent. So, and and, uh, and I'll just mention this: we're not going to say why now, but our goal uh, for getting people listening to this uh, this interview is to purchase at least not not individually, but we want to sell because of this interview at least three kits. <laughs> <laughs> Sam knows what I'm talking about. And, That's and, right. and if, if that happens, I'll come back on your show and make a big announcement. There you go. And it, <laughs> and uh, so just if you want to hear the announcement, get over there, call Sam up, or, or actually just say, Sam, give me Christy. I want to talk to her. And uh, order, order you an air tank or order three. I mean, one order of three would really be cool. <laughs> All right, Sam. Well, you've already mentioned the social media. Uh, We've mentioned the website. Uh, I'll mention it again, offroadairbuddy.com. And when you call over there and you talk to Christy making the order, make sure that you tell them that you would like to have a 15, 20, uh, 50, whatever it is that you're you're looking for. Uh, uh, Oh, and I would assume that uh, if somebody gets, is the shipping the same for the the 510 and 15, 20, or does that shipping change depending on size? It's a little bit different because of the weight and the size of the box we have to ship it in. Um, but if you give us your ship to zip code, we can get on UPS and pretty quickly give you an estimate on the shipping cost. Okay, so that's how you do it if you want to find out how much it's going to cost you in total, including shipping uh, and any uh, any taxes, is just call them up. And is it okay if I just give the number? Uh, sure, that'd be great. So 713-944-944. 7900-713-944-7900. Ask for Christy. Sam's going, you're killing me here. <laughs> <laughs> and place an order. And uh, if you're in the Houston area, uh, and a lot of people are, you can just drive right over there. What was the address for, for you guys again? It's 506 Nebraska Street. We're in South Houston. 
It's uh, off of 45 near um, College, Monroe area, right across the street from the Marksman Gun Range. Oh, very cool. And uh, so you guys can just go to uh, offroadairbuddy.com and get that information as well. Call that number I just gave and uh, check it out. Uh, get some prices. Uh, and you may have your own questions that I didn't ask. I don't see how that's possible because I asked a bunch of them. Uh, but you may have some. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, let us know if you reach over there and uh, get a, uh, uh, an air tank kit uh, from offroadairbuddy.com then uh, let us know. Call into our voicemail line and let us know, especially how, how you like it. Some customers will bring their their Jeep by and we'll all go outside and look at it and talk about it and help them find a custom mounting solution for their specific Jeep. Oh, very cool. And it's it's fun to look at other Jeeps anyway. So and That's part of the whole reason behind all this. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Well, I'm sorry you're not going to make it out to Lone Star Jeep Invasion this year. I was going to say hey and... Uh, uh, hang out a bit, but uh, like I said, maybe maybe uh, later. Oh, and you mentioned nope. being out. For sure. And you mentioned being out at uh, events. Uh, you got any events uh, lined up for this year that you uh, want to tell people where you're going to be? You know, I don't yet. That's a great idea. I will get that information to you if you'll put that uh, announcement in the, another show sometime. Sure, just let us know. All right, Sam. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. I'm sorry it took us so long to, uh, to get you on here, but eventually we got you on here, and uh, lo- lo- we're shooting for three tanks. More is fine, but th- <laughs> but three is going to put us over the line. It's it's the high water mark, and and I'm not saying they haven't sold three of these things. They have. I'm just you, you'll find out uh, once we've uh, helped them uh, sell three tanks, and we'll we'll get Sam back on here, and uh, he can tell everybody it was it was hilarious. So that this is your reason to to go out and buy this tank. <laughs> it's just to hear more of the story. <laughs> I love it. All right, th- Sam. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hey, if you're a fan of onboard air, well, I know I am, then you need to call Off-Road Air Buddy right now and thank Sam Heron for bringing the off-road community an onboard air compressed air system for nearly half of what the competitors are selling the exact same thing for. And don't forget to mention Jeep Talk Show when you order yours to get that $25 discount on any size of Air Buddy kit. It's the best deal anywhere. You, can almost, you almost can't afford not to get one at this point, right? All right, Jeeper, if you have an idea for a guest, or maybe you work in the off-road industry, or you know somebody who does, maybe you yourself would like to be a guest here on the Jeep Talk Show. We always loved everybody's Jeep stories, right? Pull up around a campfire, talk Jeep for a half hour. That's a show. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now and share your idea for our next great guest. It could be you. Coming up next week, Carrie and Paul Porter from discovery4x4adventures.com. Are you living the Jeep life? From mall crawlers to weekend warriors, from daily drivers to weekend wheelers, it's all about the Jeep life, and it's all good. It's time for Jeep Life with Jeep Mama. Oh, I want to share a story, a new story. Sorry, Josh, I'm stealing a new story. Um, It's out of Colorado from about a month ago. There was an investigation underway into a Colorado Springs auto shop after engines disappeared out of customers' cars And the business appeared to be closed. More than a dozen people say the business took their money and didn't do the work that was promised. And then some of them went to get their cars that were parked outside along the street and they found their engines were gone. Like the whole engine was out of the vehicle. The Colorado Springs police confirmed they opened an investigation, but they didn't elaborate when they were questioned by the local news station news station about what was happening with the investigation the customers shared they felt the owner was running a great business but then all of a sudden stopped returning their calls one customer said he was out sixteen thousand dollars another stated he has nothing no engine no parts no nothing another customer paid the owner about twenty eight thousand dollars many of the people took their concerns to the police and now they're just playing the waiting game Um, i want to clarify this wasn't a jeep or a 4x4 shop but it looks like it was like mostly a subaru engines anyway from the comments also on a local jeep group facebook page that's where i found this story this man apparently has done this before he just goes from town to town he skips town once he steals whatever he's gonna steal or scam and he disappears and you know what this happens more than you guys realize there's a lot, a lot of scammers out there, swindlers, grifters, taking advantage of people. 
And these con men are good at what they do. They're very charming. They talk like they know what they're talking about. And some of them even know what they're doing. And But they fool you. And they're out to take advantage of you. Now, there are some ways you can protect yourself from this happening to you. These are not foolproof because these con men are very, very good at what they do. And having many years of practice, that makes them really good at conning you. And they usually go from town to town to town. So here are Jeep Mama's top five things to look for when you're picking a mechanic. First of all, make sure you find the necessary paperwork. And a lot of times they will frame it and put it up in their shop, like a business license, sales tax permit, any certifications, certifications they may have, um, insurance, copies of insurance papers. This is not a guarantee they are legit, but it's a start. You can look up their business name as well. At Each state has different Secretary of State's offices, and you can just Google the business name to see if they're in good standing. Now, that really truly doesn't mean a whole lot. It just means that they paid their fee to the state. You, you know, you register your business name like Jeep Mama's Garage and you pay the $45 fee and you're in good standing. That doesn't mean I'm a legit garage, but at least it, you're registered. Another way, number two, is to get online and look for reviews. You have Yelp, you have Google Business, you have Facebook. Just Google the name of the company, the business name, or even the mechanic's name. Um, just Google the name. You will be surprised at what you can find. Also, ask around town to find out how long that specific business has been in that town. When did they set up their shop? How long have they been at that location? Usually, they come into town, they're set up for a year or two, and then they're gone. So, if you have a local mechanic that's been in your town for like 20 years, you're suffice it to say that he is probably not one of these type of mechanics. Check out your local county courthouse to see if there have been any lawsuits filed against the business or the mechanic. Some states, you can even go online for court records and you can search the name or the business. I know Maryland has it. Minnesota has it. Um, I'm sure there are other states too. And you don't need to be a journalist to get the information. These court records are public information. So if it's not online, just call the county clerk, court clerk, and ask, hey, do you have any civil cases against, you know, Jeep Mama's Garage or against the owner's name? And they usually will tell you, and they will tell you the status of the case, like if they lost, if there was a, a judgment against that business for X amount of dollars. Now, if you do find a shop to work on your vehicle, make sure you get everything in writing. Everything. Ask for receipts of the parts parts purchased. Get an invoice with signatures. And what this does is creates a contract and is very important if you have to go to civil court because an invoice or a quote is like a contract. And if you don't have that, the judge is going to throw your case out. You have to have a contract to be able to sue to get your money back. Now, if at all possible, do not hand over thousands of dollars, mm. for example, for restoration work or repairs. If you want, if you're going to have, you know, Joe's Mechanic Shop do a restoration on your Jeep, do not give him up front the money. And if you have to, make sure you get a detailed list of what that money is for and make sure that mechanic signs it. And don't just leave your vehicle at a shop for days or weeks or even months on end. Go there, check on your vehicle, ask for pictures for progress on that vehicle. And just randomly stop by to make sure that that work is being done. Now these are just some tips that I have found over the past couple of years that might help prevent a con man from scamming you because you know what they are really good at what they do they have been doing this for a long time and have let lots of practice so you need to be on your toes have you ever been ripped off i want you to call in and share your story with me go to jeeptalkshow.com on the contacts page 
and give it, or you can give us a call on the voicemail line. The more we stand up and share our stories, the more educated we can become to stop this kind of abuse on the innocent. So we here, really, here. really want to hear from you guys. So go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. That's uh, what, what uh, Tammy was just saying there. So uh, you kind of mentioned this, uh, Tammy, and it may be something that would not work. I mean, you're the customer, so you can you make it work if they want your business. Right. I would not pay the full price. I would, uh, you know, maybe Absolutely not. maybe 50%, maybe less. I mean, it really depends on what the parts are going to cost because I don't like the idea because the, the other, the opposite can happen. You can actually stiff the, the guy that's doing the work. So oh, agree. agree. I don't, I don't, that's where a mechanics lien comes from. Yeah. And uh, so I can certainly understand giving them enough money to cover the parts they're going to put on there. Uh, but uh, you, you may have to do a little, um, a little work on your own, figuring out what that, that cost would be. Uh, but these days with uh, with Google, that should be should go pretty fast. Don't give them all the money. So no. even like if it, you're getting it won't a keep them rest- from stealing the money from you, but at least they won't steal the full twenty eight thousand. Right. Like let's say you're getting your Jeep restored. It's going to be like ten thousand dollars. Say okay, here's um, here's a thousand dollars for you to you yeah, know get do it the spring over axle swap. Yeah, get and then, it started. And then the regular checks, you know? Go check it. Oh, it's done. Okay, let's do the painting the body now. Well, or the, the, the contract that you say, it could all be written out. Right. And then uh, this is when it's going to be done, and this is when you're going to yeah. get paid. Scope, it's, of, it's, scope of work, it's, agreed upon, it's progress another, payments, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's another way to get them to focus on your project, too. <laughs> right. Because unfortunately, I have, I have witnessed this happen, and it's... You know, it's horrible for the customer. Oh, absolutely. So how does Tammy's Jeep life compare with yours? We're always looking for Jeep stories. So contact us and let us know what your Jeep life is like. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. And remember, Tammy's uh, looking for stories about, you know, people who have gotten ripped off at an auto shop before. So if you've got one of those, be sure to call in, let us know. Don't forget about the Jeep Talk Show newsletter either. It's very easy to sign up for the Jeep Talk Show newsletter. It's got all kinds of great information about what's coming up on the show, what we're doing, what we're giving away, who we're interviewing, what's happening, what's going on, and what's coming up. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You're going to find a link to click and sign up for that newsletter, and it's going to be one of the best things that you've done all week. Don't worry. We don't spam you. We don't sell your information. None of that kind of stuff. It's all just for us. We're only going to send you one email a week. And it's just as easy to unsubscribe from that as it is to subscribe. So we hope that we see you soon. Well, that's all the Jeep Talk Show there is for now, Jeeper. Until our next show, be sure to follow us on all the social media outlets. I bet you haven't found them all yet. And if there's one that Tony's missed, let us know. But as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. So wait. You're telling me that you swab your ear holes after every shower, but you don't ever swab your nose holes? Podcasting since 2010.